What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to the Solutions Podcast. As always, I am your host, Ramsey. On this episode, I'm here to pay back a debt. That's right. I'm paying back the debt because I do not, I don't know if y'all remember a few episodes ago, I did the five guides to success, right? Well, when I went on Instagram and I did my poll, it was supposed to be 10. It was supposed to be 10, but I wanted to cut it down a little bit short just so it could be easier to digest. But not only that, so y'all can practice, right? We got to be able to, we can't just be shotgun a whole bunch of information and expect that we're going to get it the first time. So I started off with giving you five, went off the rails, did a couple of different episodes, and now I am paying my debt to y'all and giving you the, the last five guides to success. Okay, bear with me though. But before we start, of course, we have to do a recap. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get started with that. So we're going to do a recap of the first five, get into the last five, and hopefully y'all like it. Let me start by saying, please excuse the mess in the back. That's not me. My roommate is getting the boot. Why? I have no idea. Not my problem. So back on topic, let's go back to law number one. Learn to manage your boss's ego. When it comes to this, this is, this is an art, right? You got to listen to this individual. You got to see what makes his little ears perk up. You got to become a person that they're happy that you work for them. They don't want to go to work and be like, man, I'm surprised this guy still hasn't been fired, but he just hasn't done enough to get the boot. So managing your boss's ego is having them look forward to seeing you. I said it before and I'll say it again. Make them feel better than what they do when it is that they're dealing with their spouse. Let's be honest, a lot of high stress positions, most of the time that's where the bosses are at. And unfortunately, that doesn't really relate to their personal life. They have, most people have a good business life, but not personal life or vice versa. Okay. But learn to manage the ego. Again, make sure that you're that person that they can count on. Make sure that you're that person that they want to see. Law number two, make sure that you make strategic alliances. They say birds of a feather flock together, right? So even though you want to always treat everybody with respect and treat everybody like they're somebody because one day they will be, does not mean that you want to associate yourself with those people that are just pure negative and always complaining about their daily task and always complaining about the job and always always in with a negative rain cloud like the cartoons they have that rain cloud and the little rain falling down like you never want to be associated with those kind of people or those people that have a really bad rep because they they just do chasty stuff right you do not want to be associated with that associate yourself with those people that come to work with a positive attitude associate yourself with the people that come in with a go-getter attitude that they're like, hey, I'm cleaning the toilets, but these toilets are going to be the cleanest toilets you've ever seen. Like associate yourselves with those people that take pride in themselves and pride in their work. That is law number two. Learn to master strategic alliances. Moving on to law number three. Keep your cards close to your chest. Now, I'll give you a personal story on that that I just had to exercise this with, right? So... Not so long ago, a couple of years ago, I left my current job in pursuit of greater experience, right? And the reason why I left it was because I was told that where I was at, I was kind of stagnant and I was just not marketable enough to go to the next level. Now, I disagreed, but who am I to tell the person that's the one that makes the decisions 
how to make their decisions, right? At least that's how I felt at that point. So I did what they said. I left, built my resume up substantially in a way that most people cannot compete. And then I ended up coming back. But when I came back, let, let, me, let me go backwards. When I left, they saw all the stuff that I was doing that was great, that was helping out all across the United States. They were seeing that and they would call me like, hey, when you're going to come back, when you want to come back, you need to be working back for us, all this crazy stuff. And what happened is that, okay, I took an opportunity to come back. So I went back. For some reason, they tried to put me right back in the same place that I left. Same place, same position. Hell no. But one thing I did not let them know is that only because I left that higher position where I went to pursue knowledge and experience and to become more marketable, only because I left it doesn't mean that I broke up with it. So I did not let them know that they wanted me back as well. I did not let them know that they left the door open for me. They're being very supportive and saying, hey, we understand where you want to be. So we'll let you go. But in the case that you want to come back, the door is open. And they put that on paper. They put it on paper so they know that. So I know that they're not playing. So when, when they offer me back that same old job, I was like, hell no. You told me to leave to become more marketable. And now you want to put me right back where I left? You're insane. You're insane. So I reached back. Now I'm going back to do great things. And I'm happy. And maybe that's God's plan. I don't know. And now they're biting themselves in the butt. Because they did not know that I had an exit plan. In case they were going to try to burn me. I did. Now why they want to keep me. Just to be right in the same spot again, I have no idea. Not my problem. If you ain't going to help me succeed, you're going to help me fail. And I ain't here to fail. I'm here to succeed. On to guide number four, practice strategic silence. Said it before and I said it again. I used to be the worst offender at this. I used to be the person that if it came to my mind, it came out my mouth. And I realized... With time and through a lot of good friends that they said, hey, you know, sometimes you talk too much. Maybe you should keep a lot of that stuff to yourself. And even though what I had to say, I felt meant something or it came from somewhere important. Sometimes everybody does not need to hear every single thing that's going in your head. So I started practicing the art of strategic silence, even though something was going through my head. And I knew I could say it real quick. I just stopped myself and was like, will this really benefit the conversation? Would this really benefit the organization? Would this really benefit the individual? Maybe. But would it affect me or impact me in a negative way or make me look like an asshole or something? So I don't say it. Right? We don't need to say everything that we think about. And sometimes that's best. Because a lot of times, a lot of people are speaking out of pure emotion. And if you react with the same energy, regardless of what science says, a negative plus a negative does not make a positive. Not always. Not when it comes to interpersonal relationships. So if you reciprocate with the same kind of energy, what's going to happen is that's going to burn you and bite you in the butt in the long term. And a lot of times they realize that they're out of pocket and they come back and they apologize and actually sometimes respect you for it. Another thing that I use this guide specifically is to ensure that I keep people in suspense. I keep people in suspense. So I don't give a yes. I don't give a no. When they ask me something, I say, okay, I'll think about it. Walk away. 
you know, because it, it, it gives that aura of mystery and people want to follow that. People love to follow that. Why? Because in the world where everybody wants to give out all their information, it's intriguing when someone doesn't. And last but not least, protect your personal brand at all costs. What does that mean? Make sure that your name is tied to something positive, something great. Make sure that your name is tied to a skill, a skill that cannot be replicated. Make sure that your name and your reputation is followed to a T and nothing but positivity, enthusiasm, work ethic, and all those things being high. Make sure that if something negative comes out when it comes to your name, you nip that shit in the butt ASAP. ASAP. If you make a mistake, don't let it be known. Don't let it be known. Fix it right away. Fix it right away. And I'm not saying don't be humble and do not admit your mistakes. What I'm saying is if you make one and you can do everything in your power to keep it on the low, keep it on the low. Keep it on the low. You want to try to make a brand that seems perfect. You try to try to make yourself seem perfect. That everything about you is just amazing. That they don't see you cry. They don't see you fall. They don't see any of that. You got to make sure that nobody sees that except for your little tight circle. And by tight circle, I mean maybe the people at home. And even the people at home, and there might be only one person that can see that. All right? No matter what... Protect your brand at all cost. If you have made it this far, congratulations. You're five steps closer to becoming a better version of yourself, a more successful version of yourselves. So while you're out there congratulating yourself, do me a favor. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, do everything that you got to do in order to help me help you help us. Okay? It's not too hard of, a, of an ask. And guess what? It's free. Think about it. All righty. Now, on to guide number six. Since we're already talking about the brand, ensure that you create a brand that is cultivating. Develop a unique image that shows a uniqueness when it comes to your field. If everybody goes right, go left and then go right. Find a way to separate yourself from the pack, okay? Find a way to separate from you. While we're talking about a brand that commands attention, let me give you a good example. Y'all, or majority of y'all know the great man Andrew Tate. Yeah, that guy. That guy, for a while, you could not go off any social media and not see that bald head. You couldn't. Why? Because he did something that no one else was doing. And he did it in such a way that it demanded attention. And he definitely got it. Now, there's lessons to be learned. And even he has spoken on it. That understanding that sometimes you can go a little bit too far. But if no one sees you and no one's talking about you, no one knows about you. Another example is Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson made waves by going against the establishment that was going up in Canada. He was just going against what he feels, according to science, was wrong. And he did it in such a way that he went up against, I believe it was like the, the school system, the education system up in Canada. And that brand that helped his brand develop as a knowing that he's a very, very, very intellectual individual. Like, it's very hard to see anywhere where he does not break any single topic or any single subject down to the T. Like, he breaks everything down really, 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 really good. So, if you're bored and you don't know who he is, Jordan Peterson, check him out and just put his highlights and see what comes out on YouTube if they still allow him on YouTube because you know how it is. Oh, don't take this as go be an attention seeker and try to seek attention every single place that you go. Don't go doing that because there's a right place and a right time. But 
just make sure that people know who you are. Okay? This is what it comes down to. Just make sure that people know who you are and whatever it is that they know you for, it's positive. Okay? Hide number seven is learn to delegate. You need to learn to delegate. I know that I struggled with that when I was first coming up the ranks. Like, I really struggled with that. Like, because I had the experience and I had the knowledge, so I wanted to be in the middle of everything. And then I realized, like, that shit was eating me alive. So, learning to delegate, it means empowering your subordinates. Jocko Willing talks about that a lot. It's just empowering your subordinates, but also giving them some guidance, right? Because like, that's what's going to make you a good leader and that's what's going to help you become successful. Because the more of the tasks that you can delegate to others, the more that you can focus on the core goal. Because everything that we do is collective. Everything that we do is collective or it can be. But if you're focusing on the little, little, little minute details... Or if you're focusing on the little minute task, let me take that back, not the details, right? It's your job to make sure the details are in line. But if you're focused on every single little task and you're not delegating some of that work because you're so concerned with it not being done right, like you're never going to get the mission finished. You're never going to get the job finished. It's never going to get accomplished. So you need to learn how to delegate and delegate effectively and empower your subordinates to be in charge of those tasks. Hold them accountable. Reward them when they do good. Correct them when they don't. But ensure that you're starting to delegate some of the more tedious or monotonous tasks. And when it comes down to it, after the task is done, don't be afraid to take the credit. Of course, you're going to give credit to your team, but you need to take the credit because who's leading that show? And that's a very controversial thing to say because a lot of people are just like, oh man, that's selfish, that's cold, that's greedy. No, it's not. Because that project is yours. How you make it happen, that's on you. Because guess what? No one's going to care what they didn't do. They're going to look at you and why the project failed. No one's going to care. No one that matters is going to care that this guy or this girl did not do their portion of it. No one cares. The only thing that they're going to care about is when the task was not accomplished, when the project was not finished, when the sale was not closed. That's the only thing that they're going to care about. And that's going to be your ass. Learn to delegate. At number eight is master the art of attracting opportunities. Now, what does that mean? Learn skills or develop skills or show off your skills that are outside of your job description. Think about it. Everybody knows what you got hired for. At least your supervisors know what you got hired for. What you're supposed to be doing, you know what you're supposed to be doing. I'm sure you signed a contract or you signed something that says, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. But guess what? There's other tasks that need to be done. There's other skills that are needed to make the world go round. I'll give you an example. While I was serving in this very, very high place, initially when I got there, I was one of the few Spanish-speaking people. The majority of the janitorial staff and the staff that would, um, the maintenance staff and all that, they, they all were of Hispanic descent. And when they were going around trying to fix stuff or they're trying to clean stuff or trying to organize stuff and everything, they'll try to make communications with the regular people that would work around us, with my peers or my supervisors, and they couldn't, and they'll get lost in translation. So one day I just saw that they were struggling to have a conversation back and forth, so I got involved and I translated for them everything, and I think I got something that the, the boss was trying to get fixed for like a couple months, but they couldn't figure out exactly what, the, what one was trying to say. After having that conversation, they fixed it. Something that it was he was trying to get fixed for like about two months. I got it done for him and like it got done in like two days or something. And then with that skill being shown, yes, I still did my regular duties, but then they would use me a lot in order to uh, interpret 
between tasks that needed to be get done in the organization, that led me to network with a lot of people, a lot of people in that building, and that got my name out there. And now everybody wanted a piece of me. Everybody wanted to get to know me. Everybody wanted my help. And that alone is just because I saw an opportunity and I took it. And that's not the only one. I'll give an example of... There's a, a good man that I know that he started off at the company lower level just doing like the regular conveyor lines and he was just very mechanically inclined. So he saw one thing that was broken then he fixed it. He saw another thing that was broken then he fixed it and come a couple years later, that company cannot run without him and he pretty much gets whatever he wants. If he wants a day off, they didn't even charge him and he doesn't take advantage of a very, very humble man. Very, very, very humble man. He doesn't take advantage of it and everything, but now that company needs him and uses him for every single thing because of all the skills that he has. All of them. So well, that's when it comes to guide number eight is to make sure that you master the act, master the art of attracting those opportunities because those opportunities are out there. You just got to see where do my skill set match to get something that somebody above me needs. You got to look for those. You got to look for those. We're almost there, people. Guide number nine. Guide number nine is understand that actions speak louder than words. Mastering the art of talking is an art in its own. Some people are really bad at it. They say public speaking is one of the top fears of most people. I don't know whose people that is. It ain't me. But there's a lot of people that yap, yap, yap and don't do. Don't be that person. If you say you can do something, demonstrate it. Or before you can say you do something, demonstrate it. Every action that you do is going to speak louder than words. And I want to bring that just to your home. Right? Just to your home, just to in a, a, in a, from a relationship perspective. If someone's there at home every single day telling you they love you, telling you they care, and then they cheat, which one holds more weight? Which one holds more weight? You be the judge. I ain't going to be the judge of that. But that's where I come to where actions speak louder than words. Because a lot of times... People get very comfortable using their mouth. They're like, oh, I learned this in school. I learned that in school. I have this certification. I have that certification. Oh, cool. Show me. They stay quiet. And they stay quiet because they can't show it. They're good at talking. And they might be able to sell it to five people. But all those five people are not the ones you need to sell it to. A good supervisor... A good boss, a good leader will see that through. So ensure that you practice what you preach and that your actions show what's behind your brain, what's behind your words. That's guide number nine. And last but not least, guide number 10, seek like-minded individuals. What's that mean? So if you're trying to improve and you're trying to improve the organization and you're trying to improve your physical being, that person next to you is just there picking up a paycheck. It's just there getting fat. It's just there not trying to develop themselves. Do you think that person's going to help or hurt? That person is going to be your cancer. So seek like-minded individuals. So when I started doing this podcast, I would just look around, see who's doing what. And I, I was just going on a, I believe I was going on a trip to Florida. And I just happened to see an individual that had a podcast sticker. Like it was like an advertisement. I just saw it. I'm like, hmm. So I went out and talked to him. 
I went down and talked to him and I was asking him, hey, like, by any chance, do you have a podcast or is this a podcast you follow? And he's like, no, I've been having this podcast. I've been doing it for this long, so on and so forth. I said, hey, I'm working on on starting something like that. Would you be able to help me out? And he gave me some tips. He gave me some some words of advice and everything and gave me his card and said, hey, whenever, like, you need anything, like, hit me up and I'll help you out and stuff. You know, it's not easy to get started, but... It, it's a it's a wonderful reward if you seek it through, and I I, I was just like surprised, right? Because yeah, I'm not I've never even thought of looking for somebody that does something like this. And then when I got to my destination, I was talking a little bit with some counterparts, and then they're like, "Oh yeah, there's another guy here that does a does a podcast." So then I started talking to him, and then me and him became good friends. He, his show is really really big, to my understanding. It's a, a it's about a Bare knuckle fighting, right? He he runs that show, which is really, really, really good show. And he he gave me the game too. He's like, hey, do this, do that, and everything. So I'm I'm here. And I can only imagine. Well, it's not that I can only imagine. Like I have talked to people and they're like, What are you doing? Like, why are you doing it? Like, like, why are you really doing this? And 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 they they just are negative about it. And I don't I don't mind because I, I'm a man of my own. Like, if I'm doing something I will tell you why I'm doing it. As a matter of fact, episode one, go check it out. That's why I'm doing it. Like, I, I will tell you what I'm doing. I, I'm, I'm not afraid. Like, I will say I am doing this because I want to or because this is what I feel is going to contribute to the world. This is what I feel is going to contribute to my life. So I own it. I own it. I'm not afraid to own any single thing that I'm doing. But I'm not doing garbage shit. Right? But not to get off topic is... You got to seek those like-minded individuals because especially if, if let's say you're trying to do something simple like stop smoking. You think you're going to stop smoking, hanging around people that smoke? Let's be real. You're not. Same thing with drinking. You think you're going to stop drinking, hanging around with people that drink? If anything, they're going to talk you out of it. Same thing with every single negative habit that there is out there. Like they're, they're going to stop you. But if you seek people that have already gone through those things or are going through it, now, now you got a network of support. Now you got something to look to. Now you know you're not alone. So that is guide number 10 is seek like-minded individuals. So that is it. Those are the 10 guides to success. And thank you to everybody that saw it through. Now you're 10 steps closer to being successful. And I'm not just talking out my ass. Try it out. And I don't mean shotgun all that information in. Listen to the episode a couple times. Take some notes and see which one of these guides you can implement that day. And you don't have to go into all the way in the detail. I say just go down the episode, write down the main point and what it means to you. And then start writing a way that you can execute it on your daily basis. On a daily basis. Try it out. I promise you. It ain't going to hurt. It is not going to hurt. But again, actions speak louder than words. Thank you very much for tuning in to the episode. Again, if you can, like, subscribe, share it. Tell your friends. That is it. I am out. Mm-hmm.